here's the thing. I just don't want to be known as a cheapskate. I really don't. Life imitating art. It happens. Hello there, I'm Old Man Kelly. Jeff to my friends and you can go ahead and call me Jeff. So this is a uh, true story and it's it's sort of like an incident that happened on the show Seinfeld. For you, for you younger kids out there, Seinfeld was a show back like in the was it 80s or 90s? A, a while ago. And there is a episode, I believe this is what happened. George tips a bartender, but all he has is like a $5 bill. And the bartender's back's turned to him when he puts the money in the tip jar. And George, like most of us, just wants to tip a dollar or two, so he goes in to get change out of the tip jar from his five, just as the, wait, the, the waiter, who, or whoever it is, turns around. And of course, he gets mad because he thinks George is stealing the tip. I believe that was from a Seinfeld episode. I remember seeing that. Anyway, that's not quite what happened to me. Mine was, I was at a thing called Greek Fest. Greek food, beers, music. It was, it was a nice time. It was me and my wife, Dawn, my daughter, Pam, and her boyfriend, James, all went together. And we had food and a few drinks, and we're sitting at a picnic table. And at one point, me and James got up to go get a couple more beers. And we got up there, we, we ordered, and James started to take out his money. I said, no, no, James, I got this round, no problem. He's like, are you sure? I'm like, yeah. So I was getting my money out, and the, the, for lack of a better term, the bartender's back was turned to us. It's not really a bartender, it's just this table and a tent and he serves beers in a can. Anyway, so his back was turned to us because he was reaching into a cooler to get our drinks. And James goes, I'll tell you what, I got the tip. And he takes a couple dollars out and throws it to the tip jar. But the bartender's back was turned to us. So when he turned back around, and gave us the drinks and I paid for them, it suddenly seemed like I didn't tip him. Because I just took the change from paying and put it in my wallet. And I almost felt like I should throw a couple dollars in anyway, even though James over here just did. But then it would be rude to James. So I just had to, okay, sorry, waiter, I'm a cheapskate, I guess. And I mean, everybody was doing what they should be doing, yet I'm the bad guy. I'm the bad guy life, right? First world problems, right? Um, I think sometimes I should just drink out of this, huh? I mean, it seems like a waste. This keeps it warm, though, I guess. So, um, I want to talk about animals today. Um, cats and dogs. If I had to choose, I'm more of a dog person, but I'm not an anti-cat person. I have no problem with cats. In fact, I'm a soft-hearted animal person, you know? I go over to my brother and sister-in-law's house, and they've got a dog and two cats, but they don't really like their cats. They were hoping to get rid of them years ago. They looked for somebody else to take them off their hands. And we're putting it on Facebook. Anybody wants cats? We're not cat people. I don't know why we have cats. We want to get rid of the cats. And it's one of those things that I'm sure, you know, it was one of those, it seemed like a good idea at the time. But now, anyway. But whenever I go over to their house, I always pet the dog and I pet both of the cats. Now when they see me, both cats run over because they know I'm going to pet it. Um, the dog, I always give little bits of treat to him because we play poker on Tuesdays over there and there's always food. And I know it's wrong, but I always give the dog a little taste of whatever I'm eating. And I do it with my dogs too. I can't resist. Something about the way cats and dogs stare at me. I have to pet them. I have to feed them. Whatever. I've been yelled at by people before by, for feeding their dog table scraps. And I still do it. 
Anyway, back to the cat. But what I really want to talk about is our cat. Our cat, Amanda, there it is there. Um, she's getting up there in years. And up, up until about six months ago, we never had her fixed. She's an indoor cat. We don't let her outside. We figured, what's the big deal? Except for those periods where she goes in heat and makes a noise like you wouldn't believe. She's a small cat, but she makes this noise. She made this noise when she was in heat that just echoed through the whole house. Something ungodly. That's the only term for it. Um, anyway, about six months ago, I woke up one morning and there was pee all over the couch. And the cat was like on this little bed thing, scrunched up into a ball looking like... And something was wrong because the cat's never peed in the house before. She's really good at using her litter box. So I woke up my wife and said, something's wrong with the cat. And uh, so she took the cat into the vet. <clears throat> Excuse me. Cat had some sort of bladder infection caused by us never having it fixed. They, the vet explained to my wife that's one reason you have them fixed is because if you don't, you get problems like this. Who knew? So it was a very expensive operation to get the cat fixed and the bladder infection taken care of and blah, blah, blah. And I don't mind that. I don't mind the money and stuff. It's, my wife loves the cat and the cat's healthy. That's fine. But since then, the, the cat has changed. Her personality's changed. First of all, she eats. She eats a lot. She's gaining weight. I can, you can just, when she get, when I pet it now, I can just feel the difference. She's, so we have to somehow regulate the amount of food she eats, which is going to be hard because she's very insistent when she doesn't have her food. And that's the second part. She wants to be loved all the time now. I mean, there was uh, periods in the past where she would want to be petted. She would want to be you know, loved and stuff, but now she just doesn't sit on my lap anymore. She sits on there, then she gets up, she rubs against me, she does that thing where she puts her claws up right near my face, doesn't claw my face, but almost gets close, like, I could kill you if I wanted to, now pet me. And if you don't pet her, then she'll walk back and forth across you and do that thing where she just falls on you. Anyway, it's, it's really irritating sometimes. I'm trying to write my podcast. I'm on the computer typing away. Then she gets right in my face, right in front of the keyboard, and it's like... <sighs> anyway, just a little animal talk here on Old Man Kelly. Well, that's about all I have for today. I want to thank you for watching. It's always appreciated. Last week... 12 big views on the, uh, the vlog. That's a big one since the last three weeks have been one or two. Maybe uh, this week uh, you can tell your friends and we can get up to like 15. All right, Old Man Kelly, hopefully be, I'll be back next week with another thrilling episode. <laughs>